What's up guys, T-Max here. Hope you're having a great day. And this is my updated setup video. My first one was over seven months ago and I've gotten a lot of new equipment and learned a lot too. But before we begin, three quick things. One. Just to clarify, this video is not to show off what I own, but it is to help whoever wants to start a YouTube gaming channel to know what they need. And you don't need everything that I have. Two. Below in the descriptions are links for every item I'm going to be talking about for more info and how to purchase it. Also in the descriptions are links to every song you're going to hear. And last thing, I've broken this video down into sections. If you're interested in one section, but not another, simply click that link to bypass any part of the video you're not interested in. But if you want the full T-Max experience, there's no skipping allowed. Thanks again for viewing, let's get started. Video. What I see and what sees me. First up is my Vizio TV. It's 1080p, 240Hz motion capture, and 3D. And it's razor thin. So for 46 inches, it's deliciously easy to transport. And it has plenty of input slots on the side and in the back. Ladies, and the TV comes with an awesome remote with a slick design. It even slides open to reveal a keyboard, which is good for beginners, intermediate, and Super Saiyan. As for my monitor, I use a 24 inch Asus monitor. It's LED, so the lighting and colors really pop, and it has a two millisecond response time. Great for all you MLGs out there. Make sure to dedicate your next 360 no scope to T-Max for a free hug. For my webcam, I use a Logitech C920. It records in 1080p wide shot. Why wide shot? Just to make sure it captures all that T-Max sexiness. And it records in 30 frames per second. It also takes pictures, supposedly 15 megapixel quality, but they've often come out blotchy and blurry. It actually comes with a pretty good mic, but I only use it as a backup mic and as a means to sync my face cam to my mic of choice. You can connect it to a tripod or sit it right on top of your monitor. The design is straightforward and easy to adjust. It's been a great all-in-one device. But I must move on. I still love it though. The camera I'm now going to be using for my face cam is the Canon Vixia. 1080p resolution, 60 frames per second, and great low light capability. It's very compact so it's easy to hold and manipulate angles. The LCD touchscreen is 3 inches, and you can rotate that screen all the way around, which really helps me to set up the frame for my face cam and vlogs. Also, if all the mirrors in your house are broke, you still have something to look at yourself in. You sexy beast, you. Next to the screen, you'll find all your ins and outs. It has a rechargeable battery. But one thing I love about this camera is that I can keep it plugged in and recording for hours. Which is what I do when I'm binge playing a game to stock up on footage. I also like to use it to record myself sleeping all night, just to make sure that the underwear gnomes don't sneak in and steal my whitey tidies. Those miniature little fiends love my whitey tidies. And this is my Nikon 3300D. It's a beginner level DSLR camera. 1080p resolution, 60 frames per second, and a very sensual 24.2 megapixel still shot. And mine also came with an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Put those two together and you got amazing resolution. The resolution is so good that you can zoom in on people's pores just to reveal more pores. The 3 inch screen is in touch, but all the buttons make it easy to navigate. The camera comes with several settings and buttons to help get just the right shot. Most of this video is actually shot with this camera, except for the part that you're seeing now. I haven't quite figured out how to record the camera with the camera, without using a complicated system of mirrors or portals of course. As for my tripod, I use a Dalica Pro Line. This model is very sturdy and can extend to about 5 feet tall. The legs can flip out past parallel in case you want to lay it flat. The feet can twist to reveal small spikes to increase stability in nature. And the several knobs and bubble levelers can help you find and maintain the perfect angle. As for lighting, let's talk about my two fill lights first. I use two tabletop lights from Cowboy Studio. I'll either place them on a table as seen or on the floor pointing up to fill any dark spots on my green screen. They're compact and really bright. Just like me! Next is my softbox lights from Fancier Studio. I have three of these but only use one. They can extend to seven feet tall. Each one holds five bulbs that you can individually turn on or off. 
It has two diffuser sheets to help evenly spread the light. And instead of pointing it directly at me and washing myself out, I point it up to softly light me and my green screen from above. And then add the Cowboy Studio lights for filler. Audio. What I hear and what hears me. For my mic, I use the Spark by Blue. It's a high quality cardboard mic that, unlike omnidirectional mics, receives sound where it's facing and cancels noise it's facing away from. This makes outside noise nearly non-existent. And to hold my mic, I use a Rode mic stand. It has a 33 inch reach, so I attach it to the back of my desk and it can reach all the way around. It can support about four and a half pounds, which allows it to hold a mic and a pop filter. And following this cable, we see the icicle. The Spark uses an XLR cable, so with the Spark comes the icicle, an XLR to USB converter as well as a preamp. The Spark needs phantom power, and this supplies it. And no, phantom power does not mean that the Spark is powered by phantoms. Although, that would be very cool. I turn mine upside down just because that's the way my cables are lined up. And the gain knob is right on the front. It's pretty sensitive, so take it easy. For my headphones, I use the Audio-Technica M50X. They come in a few different colors, but I love the color black. Why? Because I am Batman. Unlike its predecessor, the M50, it comes with three cables that have different sized plugs. Just pop one out of the headphones and choose what you need. It's easy to open, close, and adjust. The ear pads and headband are really comfortable. And just in case you're a DJ, the ears can swivel a full 90 degrees. I support my headphones by this hanger by Elevation Labs. It's really easy to apply to your desk. And it's strong. I don't think I could pull it off if I tried. Not even if I ate all the beef jerky in the world. With my PC, I ordered a Sound Blaster ZX sound card. And this desktop dial came with it. It has a mic in and headphones out for two different sizes. A volume knob and even a microphone. It also has Crystal Voice. A software that enhances audio as well as vocals during online play. Up next are my Klipsch speakers, and at 200 watts, they're louder than anything I'd ever need. But it's the quality that sold me. With an impressive frequency range, for its price, nothing compares. And on the right speaker, there's a headphones jack, a volume knob, and a subwoofer knob. And speaking of the subwoofer, this thing is solid. And even on the low setting, the subwoofer shakes my whole room. I'm afraid to turn it all the way up because I think it may destroy the planet. I don't know, maybe one day when I'm bored, I'll give it a try. Peripherals. How my computer and I communicate. For my keyboard, I use a Razer Deathstalker. I love how the board sits so flat. And I prefer the low-lying keys also because it's easier for me to type and there's not much typing noise. Unless I'm playing a rage quit game and destroying everything in sight. The green LEDs look great in the dark, but I do wish that I could change them like the Razer Chroma models. It has a 10 key rollover, meaning if you press 10 keys at once, they'll all register. I have no idea when I would use that, but okay. And next to my keyboard is my Anchor Gaming Mouse. It has a really high DPI for response time. Rubber gripping on the thumb, nine programmable buttons, and it has an eight piece weight tuning set. Just in case you're Hercules and you feel like dragging around a 40 pound mouse. And you can adjust the color of the scroll wheel and Anchor logo to any color. And four levels of sensitivity that you can adjust individually. And here's my drawing tablet by Wacom. The tablet is huge and takes a little getting used to. It has four programmable buttons that I fully utilize in Photoshop. And the stylus pen isn't as comfortable as a regular pen but it's pretty close. It has two programmable buttons and an eraser. And I went ahead and ordered the wireless kit for it, which has a range of about 30 feet. So if you feel like drawing on your computer from down the street, go on ahead. Memory. How I store and transfer information. I use a flash drive by Silicone Power. The USB slot doesn't stick out, but is covered by titanium, making it durable against dust, water, and vibration. It's USB 3.0, so it's going to transfer 10 times faster than normal USBs. I can imagine Wolverine using this flash drive. While I use the flash drive for data transfer, I use a Seagate external hard drive for storage. I chose the slim 2TB model, but it goes up to 4TB. It has a USB 3, so yet again, really fast transfer. And to transfer information from my camera's SD card to my computer, I use the SD card to USB adapter from Transcend. The adapter is good for micro and standard size. And guess what? It's USB 3 as well. So
So when I have seven hours of footage to transfer, oh yeah, it comes in handy. And this is my PS4, just chilling like a boss. One reason I prefer the PS4 is the contour of the controllers. I just like it. And I bought this charging dock so that during my binge recording I could just switch them out and keep going. And when I play PC games that are controller compatible, I use this 360 controller. I'm not a veteran PC gamer, so having a controller really helps me when I'm running from aliens, zombies, or just pretty much anything that's trying to kill me and wear my skin. And this is my Elgato HD. I use this to record gaming footage in 1080p 60 frames per second on both the PS4 and PC. And that's why there's so many cables, they're going to one of two places. And finally, the moment you've been waiting for. Introducing Maximus, ordered from CyberPowerPC.com. First, let's cover how I keep this bad boy cool. The screen from AeroCool shows me fan speed and temperature anywhere inside the PC. I have three 140mm Corsair fans. Two of them are behind this panel. On the 750D, it's really easy to remove this panel to clean the filter and check the fans. The other 140 is in the back. For my liquid cooling, I have the Raystorm D5 Photon Kit that consists of three 120mm fans up top and a 172 reservoir with 360mm tubing. Overkill? Overkill is my middle name. For my graphics card, I use the NVIDIA GTX 980 Superclock. It has 4 gigs memory, 240 MHz refresh rate, and when compared to the stock 980, it's 26% cooler, 36% quieter, 250% lower fan power usage, and a 400% longer lifespan. And it can handle any game I throw at it. I also have an LG Blu-ray reader and writer that I never use. For my sound card, I use the Sound Blaster ZX. This is what that volume dial came with. It also comes with the software SBX Pro Studio, which allows a lot of customization like surround sound and more. But with the sound card being so great, that's why I switched to the clip speakers. Because I wanted my speakers and my sound card to equally kick sound booty. My motherboard is the Asus X99 Rampage Extreme. It has an i7-5930K processor that's 20% overclocked. It has an X99 Express chipset, a 4-way SLI support, it supports up to 12 hard drives, it has 14 USB 3 slots, and 6 USB 2 slots. That's a lot of slots. And it came with an overclock panel much like the AeroCool on the front of my computer. My power supply is the Corsair 1000W, which is overkill. For RAM, I use 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance. That's 4 sticks of 8 gigs. Why so much RAM? Video editing. For storage, I use two Western Digital Black hard drives, two terabytes each. I have them in RAID 1 for data security. And I didn't choose for them to be placed on the floor of the computer, but okay. For speed and software, I use two Samsung 850 Pro solid state drives, each having 256 gigs. And I have those in RAID 0 for performance. Alright guys, well that about covers it. I didn't go over software, because I pretty much used the same stuff that I went over in my last setup video. If you want to see my first setup video to see what software I'm talking about, and to kind of see how my setup evolved, here's that link. And I'm sure some of you are asking, how did I afford all this? Well for one, I used to work at Starbucks, and no, they did not pay me lucratively at all. The term workhorse comes to mind. Regardless, I had a job. Also, I'm a student, and I had a little leftover from financial aid. And I was in a car wreck. An elderly lady pulled through her stop sign, T-boned me, totaled my vehicle, and hurt me bad enough that I eventually had to have spine surgery. The whole experience was dangerous and very painful, but I got some money from that. And instead of looking at all the bad, I looked at the possible good. But with the money, I saw an opportunity to reach out to people like me. Those who are misunderstood, neglected, and bullied. I wanted to change the world for the better with love. And that money allowed me to purchase this setup, start this YouTube channel, and begin trying to change the world for the better. I will not say how much I spent because it doesn't matter. Because I don't care about the money. And I don't care about the stuff. I used the money to get the stuff to reach what I do care about. To reach out to the world. Not just the whole world, but you. As an individual. Why? 
because I want you to know Jesus loves you. Oh no, he went there. That's right, I did. Even though you may hate me for saying that, that's okay, as long as you know it. No matter who you are, where you're from, what bad you've done, or what good you failed to do, Jesus loves you. And I love you. And no matter how alone you might feel, you're not alone. Well guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was both informative and entertaining. One last thing. I spent a lot of time making this video. I worked really hard on it to help you guys. And the way that you can help me is by subscribing to this channel, giving this video a like, and sharing it with a friend. To do those things are absolutely free for you, and it would only take a second. That would be very awesome and very much appreciated if you guys could do that for me. Well, thanks again for watching, and until next time, T-Max out.